Welcome back to the Free Will Photos podcast video support. Uh, today, we're going to go over the initial edits. It's going to be really easy. Uh, and I'm going to show you exactly what I was talking about in the podcast. So I have an image in front of me. I want to evaluate its potential. The very first thing, if you are in on one photo raw, I recommend that you just hit AI auto. This develops your tones for you. It puts all of the things that I was talking about, contrast, exposure, detail, all that stuff, uh, information that you need to be able to see what you like and what you don't like about the photo. Now, I can see that there's some distractions in here, and there's a few ways that you can get rid of distractions. And I'm not going to do the greatest job, but what I'll do is make this roughly the same size uh, by clicking on the retouching tool making it roughly the same size, click once and let that choose where it wants to be. And if it doesn't come out the way that I expected, then I'll move the green box around. Most photo editing software has something similar to uh, what they call the healing brush inside of on one. Uh, there's something similar to this actually called the healing brush in uh, Lightroom. I know that Photoshop has it. So most photo editing apps have a way for you to remove uh, small items and sometimes even larger items. And I'm going to make this one just a little bit larger and click there. So I've removed those distractions and I can see the potential of this photo coming in. Uh, one of the things that I look at when I'm uh, seeking out the potential of an image is where are my darker areas and where are my brighter areas? I'm going to click on the view so that way I don't have those red overlays. Um, and what I noticed is I have a lot of light or bright areas coming through here. So when I'm dodging and burning, I'm going to pay attention to this area to draw, you know, a little bit of interest into that area. I have these nice leading lines that are going all the way up. And then right above the midground here, sort of in the background of the image, what I have is these mountains. Now, for me, this photo isn't very balanced. So this is where cropping comes in. And one of the things that I'm going to be looking at is what am I keeping in the image and what am I getting out of the image? I will caution you to stay within the aspect ratio of a particular crop as opposed to using freeform. By using freeform, you end up getting some weird dimensions and can cause some issues when it goes to printing the photo and uh, the printer decides to make a crop for you that wasn't what you seen on the computer, so you get a different product back and you're not satisfied and you're trying to figure out what went wrong. Probably has something to do with the way you crop the image. Now, as I said earlier, this photo is not very balanced. What I mean by that is there's a lot of sky and there's a lot of foreground. One of these, in my opinion, needs to be greater, either more sky, which means I would pull up on my foreground and then recompose my image to something that I would like to see, like maybe that or and, and what you see here is I have a uh, a smaller foreground interest, but a larger sky interest. So the foreground and the background uh, are disproportionate when they're equal to one another, but there's no symmetry. To me, the photo looks a little off balance. Or I can do the inverse of that by dragging this down simply and giving myself more foreground and less of the background. Obviously, the image that you're editing is going to drive which one of these decisions you make. But if you're editing a landscape, the, the one of the more important and I guess uh, common things to do is to keep your horizontal, one of your horizontal thirds on your horizon line. Now, take that with a grain of salt because I think this photo would be perfectly fine. And as you can see, I don't have anything uh, on the horizon line. If you're working in a non-destructive photo editor, you'll be able to come back and make these changes later. So don't get too sold on the edits that you're making. One thing that I will note, 
when you're cropping an image, pay attention to what you are getting rid of uh, just as much as what you're keeping in. As you can see, I have this little sign over here. Now, there's a way that I can use one of my distraction removal tools or retouching tools, but if I just simply drag this over and go like that, I have a composition that I'm, I'm pleased with. Or I can just drag it to the point that it's just outside the frame. This is a little overlook that uh, you can walk into uh, from this area. When you're cropping, don't just look for composition. Look for what you can remove from the image that just doesn't tell the story that you want to tell. Obviously, this is something that may be harder in other images because, you know, this was on the outside or uh, near the border. So as I crop in, naturally, those things get taken out. But as I showed you before, we had some signs in here earlier in the middle of the image and I was able to retouch those. All of those edits, had I not been explaining these things, would have taken me less than a minute to make. And I would have an image that I'm ready to start working on even further uh, by adding effects and all these other things. So that's the concept of the initial edit. Hopefully you found this a little bit informative and helpful. If you're catching this video on YouTube and you haven't gone over to the podcast, uh, please check out the Free Will Photos podcast. The link is in the description box below. And until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace. Mm -hmm.